This is not a fun VCR to take apart. I guess my definition of fun might be different from others, but usually they're ra rather pleasant. This Hitachi chassis and whatnot has just tons of these little interconnects that go between board and board. There's board up here. There's a board in the back that's now sitting over there. There's a board over here. There's a board over there. And then when you finally remove this lower board to get at the belts that I need to replace, it's got so many loading belts, the whole thing collapses on itself because it, the whole thing's just made of circuit boards. There's, there's no outer chassis, I guess you could say. There's plastic that goes around the mech but it's, it protects itself by circuit boards. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa, well, yeah. Ah, uh, unfortunately. Yep. Oh. Yes. Very recently. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Hmm. 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 Who has taken complete control and placed it at your fingertips? RCA, with an amazing VCR that asks you what you want to record and when, in simple language, right on the screen of your TV. So, what you select on screen with this advanced remote control, you'll get on videotape. The world's first remote programmable VCR, only from RCA. Technology that excites the senses. Look at this. This is a very cool looking VCR from 1985 thereabouts. It's an RCA VKP 900 made by Hitachi. Hitachi, I believe, made all the RCA portables, or at least all the ones after, say, 82-ish. And, uh, yeah, this is a portable or convertible, sometimes they were called. Sometimes the models just had a tuner timer module, and then beside it, the VCR part. This one actually docks into here. This is pretty high-end for the time. I believe it was the second highest-end model that they sold in 1985 for these convertibles. The highest-end was the 950. And it had hi-fi audio, so instead of this keypad here, there was uh, audio controls, uh, like record level controls. This is a five video head linear stereo model too, which is kind of cool. Now I have no expectations of this thing working. I've briefly tried it and I know that it needs new belts. The loading belts are total, totally borked, but even with new belts, I already see some damage from leaky capacitors inside. Uh, Hitachis were really bad for that, especially these portable ones. None of them are surface mount, but just the straight up normal capacitors are all leaky and stuff. It did come with a remote, and this is a very cool remote. It doesn't work. I'll have to take it apart, I think, and clean the battery contacts. It's not uh, not working right now. It's very cool. Now, the reason I kind of went for this is not function, just this was from the original owner. Uh, he used it for years and he bought all the accessories for it. So to carry around the portable VCR, here's the carrying case in absolutely immaculate condition. And it also came with God, the camera, it's not actually in this box, this is just an empty box, but this is the camera, oh, it is sitting in this, the camera carrying case, the color video camera, Here's the manual for the VCR. Uh, it's an extra power cable for something. And it comes with, 
here's the color viewfinder and the camera. I'll show that later on. I think this works, but again, probably capacitors. It, uh, I think the capacitors will affect the picture quality, you get lines and color problems. So I'm expecting that. Some extra patch cables. Uh, just a little earbud for listening. So I might as well show what this does. Got all of these Hitachi models with their manual eject. Well, I think, I don't know if all their top loaders had a manual eject, but most did. I guess when you think about it, what's the point? You're just popping this up. Adding an extra solenoid to eject is just fancy. Extra fancy. So if I hit play, you can hear the motor trying to load the tape, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can hear the video head drum spin up. But uh, yeah, belt slip, so nothing loads. Hit stop. So if you ever get one of these convertible Hitachi or Hitachi made RCAs and it does that, belts. It's pretty obvious belts, but yeah, belts. What's interesting is fast forward and rewind don't work. I suspect the idler is also. But it does sound like the loading motor is going. Wait for it to time out. Rewind, same thing. So I don't know if the loading motor has to do something before it can fast forward or rewind, but it seems to be... Ooh, I think this wasn't put back on correctly. Bit of a bulge. I don't know, maybe it's just shaped that way. Anyway, take a quick gander inside. You have your idler there. Here's all your VHS goodness. Here's your five head. So uh, I'll show, I'm gonna take this apart. I'll show what that head looks like once I take it apart here. Here's what the back end looks like. Uh, there's a switch for remote, normal, or unified. I think unified was that really fancy, fancier than the one that this came with remote that controlled everything. I guess it had different codes. Um, your tuner, normal, cable TV, or HRC. These were like slightly different frequencies for certain channels. Uh, auxiliary battery charge, so it's like a power output. Cable adapter, I guess you could have a cable adapter go in and tune more channels or something. This is old enough to have separate VHF and UHF inputs. As you can see, I very haphazardly hooked this up. Does have an extra outlet, and because it is stereo, you have audio and video. It's new enough to use the correct color code. Oh, there's more on the side here. Now, what's interesting is the RF modulator is built into this portable unit here. So you can see your channel 3-4 switch is located on the side of the actual VCR portion. Here's your um, camera connector. DC 12 volt in so that um, car adapter you can plug into here. Microphone input, headphone output, and uh, noise reduction. You can have sound with sound. You can turn sound with sound on or off. Sound with sound. So yes, if you want to remove this from the dock, all you need to do is flip your little front door down and then pull this forward, like so. And this little guy that sticks up here is the dock connector. So if I remove this and take a look at the back, here's your RF out. So you can, if you have an external power supply, use this separately from the dock and hook it up to the old TVs using channel three or four. What's neat is it has a little door. So when you take this on the road, 
you can close it and it's protected. There's lots of these C instruction book. Here's the uh, battery. Ooh, that comes out quite a ways. I doubt it's good, but you could really rebuild these if you want to, if you really want to use this in a portable fashion. And of course, redocking this goes the opposite way. This absolutely fascinates me. This LCD stays um, showing something. Now, I don't know if it's just this, um, this stays when it loses power, or if there's a small cell in here somewhere that's providing power. If I eject the battery, it's not the battery, so this LCD might might just stay showing that when it doesn't have power. Kind of neat. Anyway, let's take this, just slide it back into place like that. Now you have just a regular VCR sitting on top of your console television in the 80s, you know, yeah, I just cut power with this on a different mode, showing record time, and it's uh, still showing. Hey, I have an idea. Let's try this camera out. So here it is. All your, these would be basically remote, wired remote controls for VCR. Got your color balance, your auto iris, Zoom speed, fast, slow, your white balance controls, focus controls, Ooh, big and chunky, big microphone. This actually has the, uh, the whatever it's called, the wind filter thing. Usually that's always missing on these. Your headphone jack, stereo or mono, and you can hook up an external mic. Power on standby, automatic gain control. Not sure why you would need that on here, but uh, yeah. And then I believe this boot for the viewfinder just slides on here. This might need another hand. Yeah, so it just sits like this and then try and push, slides in like that, sits on top. Got pause, autofocus, and zoom controls. And then this, let me move this handle out of the way, has a little key and plugs in like that. Next, you plug this into the VCR. So that is keyed like there. Oh. There we go. So I've got almost everything ready. It's got power, flip on power, and oh yes, I gotta take the lens cap off. Oh boy! Let's try and set the white balance here. I believe that has some color problems. You can play with the yeah, color balance doesn't seem to do anything. Here's your viewfinder. You can flip it up. See the little mirror? See the tiny CRT in there? Zoom is set to very, very slow. Which is funny, because it's set to fast. That's slow. Good lord. So that's fast. I mean, I can just go and manually move it like that. And I can adjust the focus. Let's see here. Set to manual, set to auto. Oh, it is set to auto. Oh, I'm seeing my reflection on the videotape there. Yeah, this that's is not meant for close-up 
at all. And that is all yellow. So, capacitor is on here most likely. Fade out. I'm actually surprised it works at all. Auto iris, close open. Ah. So in low light situations, I can blow out the picture. Hmm. Cool. Just to show you, this is the handle that you hold and it goes down. Ooh like that so you can hold the camera this is awkward like that and then when you want to fold it again fold it up there's a little button here it folds up and I believe yes you have your record standby button and your zoom controls are also on the handle This is something that would definitely not get used again. Though I'm, I'm kind of tempted to, to make this work properly. I wonder if that's something I can easily get working. Fix that yellow. It's really not coming off on camera. The white balance of my camera is doing such a good job it's making this picture look black and white. But I can assure you in, in real life, this is yellow. It's just like a washed out yellow. Just to interject here, I missed an entire section of controls hidden in this door here. So you can set timers, you can put words on the screen at certain times, move the location, change the character, uh, you can put the date and time stamp, turn the Tyler on and off. So this is all the on-screen controls that these old Cameras could do with a little title like Brewer's Birthday. All right, uh, take this apart. Let's just go through here. Two screws on the top. Nice thing about a Hitachi manual eject pops up, comes off. Now, there's two screws on the back here and here. Phillips. And this should just slide up and unclip like that. And the battery has a little connector in here. Just go and unplug like so. And this whole piece goes away. So next. Let's take four screws off the bottom. Okay, flip this around. Now I want to take this front plastic off and there's just two clips on either side. Pop that, and pop the other side, and then this just kind of lifts up and out. So now that's removed. And then this whole mechanism will just lift right off of this bottom piece. And there you go. But that's the easy part. Now we get into the hard part. You want to get <clears throat> under here. This is where the belts that will most likely need to be replaced are. And it's a matter of popping off all these circuit boards. So first one we'll do is the easy one. And that's this one back here. There's these little clips that just lift up like so. And then to lift the board lift this board 
off of this one. You just got to kind of give it a little coaxing very gently. Just a little bit of something. Just a tiny bit. There we go. And it slides up. And then there's a connector here for the video head. So we need to pull that connector up. Disconnect it. And there we go. So video board out. One of many. And you can see these connectors on the board that it plugs into. There's a lot of those. Now next, on this side here, there's a connector right here. So I want to pop this board up. Get my hand out of the way here. Very gently again. So now that one's unplugged. And the front. The front has, I think, three connectors? Yes, one, two, three. Let's go in and gently work your way up with these. Now that's out. So now we want to get this board out. And it hinges over here. There's a clip and a clip. So to start, pop this clip in. Okay, and then the next one, oh, pops back in. It's annoying. And then that one. And then these little metal tangs tend to get a little lodged there. So I gotta work them off. I was actually surprised that these are strong enough to make a difference here. But they do. See, now these ones are holding. There. Okay. Now we've got this off, and this side. This should just start to work its way down. Do I have anything that I've missed? Nope. What am I missing here? Oh, the one on this side is popped back in. How rude. There we go. And now it peels down. And one thing to note here is there's actually two connectors that go up to this mechanism from this board. There's one here and there's one down there. So when you're putting this board back, you need to make sure you align both of them. And you can tell when they're aligned because they actually go right through the board and you'll be able to see the pins going in there. And another thing to note, because I've done this and it didn't work, there are two rows on this. It looks kind of like there's one, but there's two. And it's real easy to plug the bottom row into the top row here and only have one set of connections. So yeah, don't do what I did. And now we're inside. And as you can see, I've already been in here messing with the belts. Just trying a rubber band. Fortunately, I don't have rubber bands small enough to replace these, which are just soft and gooey. And uh, to replace them, this whole motor, this one screw here, this motor will come out and you can easily replace this belt and hook these two on. Yeah, I even tried boiling these. First time boiling belts, did nothing. Now we can get a better look inside. Here's your five video heads. One, two, three, four, five. So I believe the way this one works is you have your uh, two video heads for one playback speed, two video heads for another playback speed, and then this fifth head is a trick head to try and clean up the picture a little bit more. But you see that they're 90 degrees. This set is 90 degrees from this set, which is the old, old way. Uh, that Toshiba I had had them not 90 degrees, but they were almost like they put the second set of heads where hi-fi would normally go. So yeah, there's different variations, but this was very common for Hitachis of the time. And I've seen this a lot, where the little metal insert on the pinch roller corrodes. 
It looks like there's a bunch of dirt, but it's just how they are. Here's your capstan. It's so directly driven from the capstan motor. Your idler. These are directly driven from an idler motor underneath. You have the loading motor, which will move this into place, this uh, pinch roller into place, and will move the guides. And then your last motor is for the video head drum. Do sensor. And here's something very cool that it came with. Paper. This is a brochure for RCA's home theater. All the products. Now this, these remotes are different. I think this is a 1986 brochure. You more than likely bought this a little later. Look at that. The projection, 45 inch TV. The Color Track 2000. The PLR 500 remote theater-like picture in picture. Look at that wood cabinet that it closes into. Oh, that looks cool. Those speakers on the sides. So we're into the 28 inch models. Now, this is before S video connectors were around. So this is just composite. That's all you get. Lots of audio in, audio out. Home theater connections. Look at the regality of this. It, this looks like a phone booth. This looks like a Doctor Who police booth or something. It's ridiculous. And now we're getting into more affordable models, let's say. Still 28 inch displays, or 28 inch tubes. Got the modern white and black of the 80s or the old school wood or the grandma's house wood design. Say wood, it's all particle. But oh, oh, oh. This, so this is from 1986. This, this is the TV I grew up with. This is literally the TV we had in my house. This is what, a 26 inch? 26 inch color track, yeah. And that remote, this is a six button remote. I kept this remote. This is my, from my childhood, my souvenir, <laughs> look. We had to get rid of the TV. I think we got rid of it in the late 2000s just because it was useless. It only had a, um, a coax connection on the back. I think it tuned cable up to 50 or 48 or something, some oddball number. And uh, didn't have any line-ins, so it kind of sucked for a DVD player in the 2000s. It was big. It was a console TV. But I kept the remote because this is something from my childhood. That is cool. And all these other, so many different styles. Yeah, I think this, this style here was very common. I remember seeing it a lot. Now we're getting into the, the stereo monitor receivers. So these are high end. They have speaker outputs. They got the super fancy remote, the unified remote. That, that executive leather chair can sit in your den. Still 26 inch. So like you look at this, this is a pretty good sized CRT, 26 inch. Yeah, I remember seeing these. I think, I think my aunt had one of these for a while. Don't remember the remote. The remote was probably long gone, but I do remember this one in a silver. Yeah, like this in a silver look. RCA was so common around here back then. They were everywhere. And I liked these. I like the picture they had. I like the reliability. Yes, and I had later on a newer version of this that uh, didn't have the LED readout. It was an on-screen display, and the face was wood grain. And I remember I just got my license, and I was driving around in the rain, and this was by the side of the road for garbage pickup. And I picked it up, put it in the back of the car, threw it in my parents' garage, waited a couple weeks for it to dry out, plugged it in in the backyard. 
worked great. Used this as like my test TV for years. Again, fantastic picture on it and good sound. They had very good sound. These are your more basic models without the digital tuner. Smaller, so 14 inch portables and a nine inch portable. We'll go in, in to describe all the cool features, the portables that have the signal seek electronic tuning. If anyone's ever used one of those and it's got the little green line that goes back and forth. Describing all the different remotes, all the technology in there. Oh, now we're getting into the VCRs. This camera's not going to pick it up very well because it's just it it's dark on the on the print. But this is the VLP. So this is the 1986 model year because this one I have is a VKP, which is 84, 85. So this is 85, 86. This is the next year. But these are the models. I don't see a lot of these particular VCRs around anymore. I think I've seen one or two of them on eBay. I don't see much with them. Very cool. RCA and Hitachi, because these were all Hitachi made by this point. That other Hitachi I showed that had the detachable remote on the front did the same thing. It had that sort of shelf come out the front. Thankfully, RCA didn't do the stupid detachable remote. That was a dumb idea. There's your convertible. There's my remote. There's your 950, your Hi-Fi series. Now we work our way down to the more basic models. I remember this one when I was a kid. The VLT385. Top loaders, the last of the top loaders. Dying breed. Top loaders stuck around for those convertible portable models, just for ease of use, but even in 1986, RCA was selling very, very basic top loaders. Interesting. All the different features. Convertible convenience. The color cameras. So this would have been a later version. Look at how short that camera is. The 86 version. Pro Wonder Camera. I think I'm going to, I might scan this and, and put it online if it's not online already, because this is cool. Here's your whole set. I, I don't know if this was before or after dementia. RCA came up with the name Dementia, very poor name in hindsight, uh, for their home theater series. I think that might have been later. That might have been like 87. It's like their SVHS models were sold under the Dementia name. But And I've never seen their audio equipment. I've never, no one bought it around here. I've never, ever seen it. Their AV equipment was huge everywhere, but their audio equipment just didn't exist. Like, I don't know if they... If they made it themselves, if they outsourced maybe to a like a Japanese manufacturer, and if so, who? But yeah, it wasn't very common. I loved the idea of having all the same brand and everything matching though. Still do. Like my components to match. Those big shiny woofers on the speaker. Oh, here's a guide for your color televisions. So you've got diagonal size. So in inches, you work your way from nine inch up to the 45 inch projection. And you have different features like what the remote it comes with, the six button or the 22 button, or the digital command centers, 31 and 55, type of tuner, knob, scan and see, keyboard. Full spectrum chassis. What on earth is that? Monitor capability with number of jacks, auto programming, 
Super AccuFilter picture tube. Ones that have a light sensor. It's a very neat sales brochure. Oh, a VCR comparison. So these are the VCRs being offered in 85, 86. The VLT 250 and 270 would be the top loaders. These would be the front loaders. These are all the hi-fi models. And then T is for the VCR, like a standard VCR, and P is for the portable convertible models. So 800 and 950. Yeah, top loading, front loading, convertible, yeah. Hold up. The VLP 950 HF was a front loading convertible? I didn't know such a animal existed. Oh, it is. Because this is in the tail end of convertibles. So that might be, and like, don't quote me on it, because I don't know what I'm talking about, but that might be the last or the only front loading convertible VCR out there. Got another brochure, widen your world of video with the RCA video accessories. Happy families using wood grain, grain stuff. Computer, really? Did RCA dabble in personal computers back then? So we get the battery, battery connector, so you can use spare battery. DC car cord. This did come with a DC car cord, so I can use this in my car. Came with that bag. Uh, viewfinder remote cable. No, don't have that. Ooh, special effects lens filter. Cool. Wireless mic. Shoulder strap. Camera mount. Film slide adapter. So you can transfer 35 millimeter slides onto a video and put some cheesy organ music on there too. That'd be great. Carrying case. I got the carrying case. Shoulder strap. Is that a shoulder strap that goes directly onto the VCR or does that, I wonder if that clips right onto the VCR. I didn't see any, any mounting points on there. Ooh. And you can buy some blank tapes with that old school RCA design. Is that right there? Back when they called, they actually had their own model number for the blank tape VK250. One more brochure RCA video cameras for 1985. Look, I can do that. I can go to the park. And I can film birds with this over my shoulder and this on my other shoulder. Then I can watch it back. <laughs> 2020 me looked at this picture on the wall for a second and went, oh, there's the TV. Okay, so here's all the cameras. This is the one that I picked up, the CKC021. CKC031 looks a little smaller, more compact. 19 looks smaller, but less capable. Um, yeah, black and white viewfinder. This one's got a color viewfinder. And here is the VCR, the VKP900 convertible VCR. You can just lift it out of its place. Stereo recording and playback. Not hi-fi though. Five head record playback system. 